gon' call me Jiggy when I'm home, they call me Snowman yeah. We ain't never home, but treat the city like the base, yeah You know where to look if you're looking for the wave, yeah Looking for the... What's happening? What it do? What's going down? Welcome to another episode of the Euro Stepping Podcast. Snowman, what it look like up there in Seattle, bro? Man, I had to close the blinds because it was beaming so tough. Huh, y'all yeah. finally see the sun, huh? <laughs> finally, huh? <laughs> yeah, now, man, it's actually been beautiful out here, man, so I'm, I'm really feeling myself. But it looks like you're wearing a hoodie in May. You know what? <laughs> I just did that for the show, brother. Oh, okay. You know, listen, listen. No, I ain't gonna do that. I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> Snowman, we have a vet on here. Man, guy who played 17 years professionally in Europe. Mm. We ain't really, we ain't interviewed nobody who done played that long. Nah. You know, he's a ULIP Cup champion. That's how long he played. It was ULIP Cup. It's Euro Cup. <laughs> hey, time it, out. It was ULIP Cup. Hey, 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 Dave. You coined the phrase super vet. He might be the, 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 the super duper vet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? I never thought I would be called that, man, to be honest with you. I got these little young boys hitting me up. Yo. OG, what? <laughs> yeah, I never know. thought I would hear that, man. I mm -hmm. never thought I would hear that, but it's all love, though. Oh, uh, really? If you, I mean, that, that, that's really a, a, a compliment. No doubt. No doubt. But you was a ULIP Cup champion, a German League champion, a German Cup winner, a German Cup MVP, a Belgian League champion, a Belgian League MVP, a Spanish Cup winner, Israeli Cup winner, the Southland Player of the Year, and a three-time First Team All-Southland. Welcome to the show, Damon Mallet. Appreciate y'all for having me, good brothers. Good to see you both. Nah, this is gonna be a good one, man. Good to see you, man. We're glad to have you on. We really appreciate you taking the time, brother. Definitely, man. Wouldn't have it any other way, man. Let's jump right in, man. Look, so <clears throat> Dave mentioned some of your college accolades. Um, can we just start right there? Can you talk a little bit about your college experience? You weren't the guy who went to the huge D1. You went to the mid-major level. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that experience? No doubt. Uh, you know, a lot of people understand, man, I, I wasn't really a basketball player. I was a baseball player. I was an All-American in baseball, man. I just, I just love basketball. I played baseball better than I played basketball. Mm -hmm. But just the hype of, of basketball just, it, it just grabbed, I gravitated towards it. You know what I'm saying? So I just stuck with it. Mm. Was it initially supposed to go to LSU to play both. But, you know, during that time, you know, it was such a, you know, both of them had good programs. You eventually gonna have to pick one because uh, bas baseball overlapped in the basketball season. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't leaving Louisiana at the time. You know, I was mom and dad's boy. I didn't want to be away from home too far. So I said, look, I'm going to go to Magnese. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it wasn't a, you know, a big name school. Nobody knew about it. You know, you really had to know your research to yeah. know that Joe Dumars went there. That's probably the only high profile guy. But, uh, you know, I was always. Can I jump in real quick before you finish? Go ahead. This guy may not be high profile, but I wonder if you know him. There's a legend from my city that's a legend at McNeese State. His name is Roselle Ellis. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Al, one of my favorite players of all time, a player <laughs> probably nobody ever heard of. Right. I forgot Ro was from, uh, you know, Ro was a senior when I was a freshman. We started oh, again. Man. I started my, I played one year with Ro. Roselle was, let me tell you. Dog. <laughs> when I tell you a guy you want on your team, no doubt, had an unorthodox game, real strong. He was, I mean, he could do everything, man. He just will, will, will get in your shit. No don't scared of nobody. I mean, he just, I, I honestly think Roe could have 
could have been a, a, a pro in Europe. Yeah. Like for, for a long time, man. He's a typical European professional player. You know what he did though? He actually went to Asia. He and went got to a Asia. Bunch yes. Of pace. Mm -hmm. yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh, so he's he's my big homie from the city. He was somebody I looked up to. Um, and now actually he's a police officer uh, doing his thing, man. So it's it's dope that you know him. I just wanted to see if you do that now. Yeah, come on, man. Come on, bro. That's my that's my brother, my big brother. Rodan, Rodan, he got into me a lot of times, man, my freshman year, man. He Ro was one of the guys that made me super tough. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always tough, but like Ro made me like a, a dog. You know, yeah. and shout out to Seattle too, because Seattle produces a lot of hoopers, man. A lot yeah. of hoopers. It's good to hear you say that. Dave's gonna start hating any in a second. <laughs> any moment now, he's gonna throw some hate in there. I mean, I, I didn't say nothing about Seattle basketball. I mean, it's all guards, but you know, I never said anything about Seattle basketball. That's true. That's true. That's true. So now, uh, so I end up going to Magnese, and then uh, you know, I just I made the best out of it, man. Had some had some some guys that could really go and I mean, we came together and, and, and had a successful season, seasons, you know, at Magnet State. So mm -hmm. I can't complain at the route that I did take, man. So you go through that, your three-time all-conference, all that good stuff, right? Um, you finish up, where's your head at? Are you thinking you're getting drafted? Or are you thinking, wh 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 where are you at with it? Well, me and T.R. Brown, Dave knows T.R. Me and T.R. Brown, bro, we were, we were tops in, in, in the nation in backcourt. You know, we were ranked top five. I mean, I averaged 23, T.I. averaged 22.5. I mean, we were fighting on who was going to outscore each other. You know what I mean? We just, we, we, were, we were a dynamic duo. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, honestly, I thought and was told I was supposed to go in the second round, which, you know, ain't, don't really mean anything. But at the time, the fact of being drafted was something. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, the pick that I was supposed to go, uh, who got picked? Uh, uh, from St. John's, Darren, Eric Barkley. Eric yeah. Barkley. I don't know if you remember Eric Barkley, but oh, Eric, Eric was together. okay. You, Eric, Eric was the was my pick. Was was he he got picked where I was quote unquote said I was supposed to go. Was that by Portland? Who was that by? I, I think Portland. Portland at the time. Yeah. So it's been so long ago, man, I don't even remember, but uh, E. Barkley got picked up. You know, that was a guard heavy draft that year. And, mm -hmm. and uh, not in uh, what, 01, 01. Okay. Yeah. So that didn't happen. So was projected to go to the G League, didn't want to do that. You know, it wasn't enough money at the time. So I said, look, I'm gonna I'm a go to Europe. I'm gonna go to Europe. But I, I did get a, some uh, vet camp invites. So I ended up going to the Pistons. I went to the Pistons, I went to Detroit. Played the summer league thing and uh, got released in during vet camp. Okay. So I, man, people don't know, man. I've, I've been, I got a story, bro. I got a story. I've, who, I've who had this. Who was on the Pistons at that time when you went to vet camp? Dean Cleaves, Chucky Atkins, Mikey Moore. Mm. Uh, man, uh, Rodney White was the first round pick for the mm. Pistons then. So I played with those guys. So um, it was, it was a good experience. Great experience, That's actually. Good. So. Hey. So you you decide you're coming overseas. Dave jumps in here typically. So you decide to come to Europe, right? Your first European gig, you come to Germany. What were you thinking, man, when you when you decide to, you know, make this, I'm going to go to Europe, man? Were you nervous? Because I know you like us. We ain't know nothing about Europe. We ain't know what was going on there. We ain't know what to expect. So where was your head at? Was you nervous? Were you anxious? Were you scared? I mean, tell me about it. Man, I <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. I was extremely nervous. I had that anxiety because I had left camp to go to their preseason camps. And you know how camps are in Europe. Yeah. You're you're typically not in the same city where you're playing at. No, no. So I got a phone call from my agent at the time. He was like, dude, you got to get on the plane. I'm like, huh? Man, I had to go straight to Czech Republic to some camp. Mm -hmm. Got picked up by the squad, by the team, the team driver, or whatever, taking me to the hotel with guys I've never even heard of, seen or nothing. European guys, you know, I'm I'm 
I get off the bus, go to the hotel, I'm starving. Mm -hmm. Got some little like banana, little sandwiches in the little hotel lobby, orange juice, all that type of stuff. Little I'm cheese. Scratching my head. Cheese. Like, cheese, cheese and meat. <laughs> so I'm like, man, where am I at? So the coach introduced me to all the players. You know me, I'm still getting a feel for everybody. I, you know, I'm sleeping with one eye open because you know you got roommates. You know, I didn't know the guy that was my roommate. So I'm like, man, all right now. So I said, let me go ahead and lay it down because we had, you know, two days the next morning. Y'all, I get up, we going through some stuff I ain't never did in my career. <laughs> I'm, I'm scratching my head, Dave and Big Al. I'm like, yo, what are we doing? Right. You know, we start off in the morning doing weights, you know, shooting drills, all kind of drills for days, man. So, I mean, it it, it was just, it was uncalled for and unnecessary. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I had to say right. it myself. You know? right. so eventually, you know, it started, you know, I started, you know, getting cool with the guys and start picking up the ways. Cause I, I actually didn't, uh, I didn't sign no contract. So it was kind of like a trial type of situation because I was a rookie, you know, coming from, I'm, I'm not coming from North Carolina or Duke, coming from mm -hmm. Magnet State. These guys want to, you know, they see film, but they actually want to see how you play. Mm -hmm. So my mindset going over there, I'm like, you know, I ain't know what to expect, but I knew at the same time, look, I'm, I'm finna give it to somebody, whoever guard me in practice, because I'm finna, I'm finna get a contract. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm finna, I'm finna give a lot of people some buckets. And that's what I did. That was in Bronzewag, so wasn't it? That was in Bronzewag. Sure it was, man. That was in Bronzewag. And you know, as soon as you go through those drills that night, you know, you're doing team practice, but you also playing them friendly games. Mm -hmm. Friendly games, yeah. And friendly games, man. You playing them friendly games. So once the ball was thrown up and got in my hands, I'm putting that ball in the basket. You hear me? <laughs> Listen. Before, before we get too far, I need you to break, because we've never really talked about that phrase on the show, and there's a lot of our viewers who aren't familiar with the term friendly game. We are, but a lot of our viewers aren't. So can you explain what a friendly game is? A friendly game? <laughs> a friendly game is a game that is unnecessary. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. It's unnecessary. It's a game that just kind of like, prepares you for your season or your practices or whatever the case may be. It's a scrimmage. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a scrimmage. You know, a scrimmage against other other European teams that don't need to happen. Let's just say it like that. Right. But, the Go ahead. I mean, it prepares you, you know, for your upcoming season, but I mean, you could you could you could practice against each other and get what you get out of you know these scrimmages. You just you just facing, you know, different opponents from different teams. Right. The only the one thing that I really couldn't stand about friendly games is typically they'll beat your body to all hell and then throw you out there and tell you to go play the friendly game. Like yeah. there ain't no way I'm gonna hoop tonight. Like, <laughs> I got nothing in the tank. You talking about go play this game and get mad at you if you don't win. I'm like, right. all right, ain't nobody trying to lose, but damn, we tired. Right. We were you know, doing four days for six weeks straight. <laughs> man, this game, we just got through running from the mountains with lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> and you expect us to come in here and perform. Yeah. But to, I mean, y'all don't understand. I've I've done well, that for 17 cool. years. I've never missed. I've never missed a a preseason. Out of 17 years. So y'all know how my body feeling right now. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I I used to, I ain't gonna lie to you. I used to try to miss them things at all costs, dog. <laughs> Man, Man you bring, me, bring me in November, dog. <laughs> facts. Facts. I, I, October, November. I never even even when I started making a name for myself, Al, I I they always wanted me there, like to be like the role model. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The leader of the team, which I wasn't tripping. You know what I'm saying? Because once I started, you know, being successful, it was all good because, you know, the salary yeah. started going no up. No doubt. You know yeah. what I mean? So you ain't really complaining. You know? No, it's more yeah. checks. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You get all 10 checks. All of them. 10 checks. <laughs> that, <laughs> that check started in August. Man. Yeah. I'm telling you. So now nah, it was, it was, it was all good though. 
It was all good. So, so you go to Bronze. You get through that. How was how was how was that? How was Bronze Wag? Because I remember that Bronze Wag is really not a city to. It ain't much to do in Bronze Wag. Nothing at all, man. Um, you know, I was on the phone all the time. You know, I was talking to my family. My phone, but I used to spend two thousand dollars a month on my phone bill because yeah. you know you didn't have. I, I think I don't even know if Skype was out then. It was. You know, they didn't have Vonage or nothing. Nothing, no. Nah. So I'm straight, you know, straight using a phone from from landline to to the crib, talking to my mom and dad, friends and family, just telling them about the experience you know, so far. Uh, Bronzewag was a big city. It was a soccer city and they had American football, but Bronzewag, I mean, basketball was up and coming. You know, I didn't really get out that much. Uh, my teammates had to beg me to get out. You know, I would try different restaurants and, you know, and, and, and hang out a little bit and start, you know, hitting the clubs every once in a while. But other than that, man, I, I didn't do nothing but stay home and practice and, and get on that PlayStation at the time, man. Yeah. <laughs> So that made the time go by, but it, it started to grow on me. Uh, you know, people, I started, you know, making some noise and, you know, winning and, and, and being the man on the team. So, right. you know, people started recognizing. So it made you feel a little bit better, you know, as far as, you know, being at home, you know, so it was cool. Okay. So, cause you played in Germany, uh, your first, what, three, four, maybe five, six years professionally, right? Big Dave, man, I, I I played. Look, I had so much success at Bronzeville. I signed a three year deal because mm. I was I was player. I was player the year three years in a row. They call it sportless des yachts. So soccer, American football, every sport they had in there, I was player the year. So, you know, I was being shows major love. Right. So I was like, man. Shit, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, from McNeese to, to being the man, not knowing I can make a whole lot more money. Yeah. Right. You know, at the time, my, my, my agent, you know, he was he was working. I was probably lower on the totem pole in, on the, uh, on the, on, in my agency, but, you know, because he had, like, you know, some more NBA guys. So he was just selling for jobs. So I was just like, shit, I'm going to get this security. You know, people love me here. So let me just sign this three year deal when other teams were really coming at me. So I was just like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. You know, so I stayed there and signed a three year deal. So after then, uh, one of those years, I tore my ACL. Tore my ACL. People don't know that. I tore my ACL, came back. They showed me love. They let me go home and rehab. So I was loving and still get my money, all my bread. I mean, <laughs> wasn't a cent left out. So I was just like, man, this is love. You know, so I went home, rehab, came back. Let me see, I was only out that season for like four months. It took me three, three and a half, four months for, oh, from man. ACL. Came back, man, I was blessed to like uh, not really miss a step, man. Came back where I left off. So they showed me mad love. And at some point I was just like, look, I gotta go get some more bread. Right. Some more bread. So I went to Bamberg. Yeah, yeah. I went to Bamberg. That's when I won my first uh, my first championship with Coco Archibald, Curl Beecham, Stefan Harmon, who was the you know the, yep. the the next best thing in Germany, you know the the prospect. Uh, won a chip there. Then that's when the you know the stock started raising. Right. Stock so started raising. Hold on one second. I need you to hold on one second. I need you to back up just a smidge for me. Tell help me understand how you got out of bronze swag into bomber because you want a three-year deal was there a buyout was there a what was it what, how that was there a negotiation that had to take place bronze Wag wanted me back but bamber offered me more money okay and you, you know, were free you didn't you weren't you weren't locked in i wasn't locked in i was free okay, okay. i was free then so okay. i was just like you know what bamberg was a hard team to beat when i was in bronze Wag. they were playing in in you know, two leagues at the time, a European competition and domestic competition. I said, oh yeah, I cut down on some of these prices. Let me go ahead and, you know, get the bread and and, and continue to, you know, have some type of success. Because at the end, the end goal for me when I started was to play in the Euro League. Yeah. I wanted to be in a, I wanted to be a Euro League player, you know, because I was always, you know, when you're over there, you're watching 
you know, European game. So I'm like, man, it's not, I'm gonna just play one game a week. Yeah. You play one, you practicing the whole week. So I'm basically those three years. Well, now I played in the Euro Cup in my after my first year in Braunschweig. Uh, played in the Euro Cup. We qualified for the uh, Euro Cup at the at the time, or Europe or whatever. And uh, I'm, you know, watching Euro League teams on TV. I'm like, yo, I I got to play in the Euro League one day. You know, so that was the end goal. So I uh, got to uh, Bamberg. You know, whoever wins the championship plays in the Euro League. Mm -hmm. Made that happen, and then that next year. At my second year on that contract, Al and Big Day, let me tell you, my mind, bro, was so focused on playing in Euro League. I took that, that, that mentality from Magnese coming to being a pro. I took that same mentality going into that second year after I won a championship in the Euro League. I said, I'm finna give it to these guys. I'm finna make a name for myself. Mm. End up leading the first league in uh, the first round in scoring in uh, the Euro League. Mm. So people don't know that, you know. That's when we. That's when I played with Derek Phelps. Yeah, Legend. Nick Simpkins came in. We had like NBA vets. I, I was watching Deep Phelps play against Michigan when Chris Webber called that timeout. Right. <laughs> so being able to play with those guys, Derek yeah. Taylor, De uh, Big Dave, you probably know D Taylor. Yeah, I think that was the year I was there in Germany. That was your second year. Yeah. Was right. in, uh, in Oldenburg. You was in Oldenburg. I remember that with yeah. Ty McCall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a good so team too. We had, a, we had a real solid team. Then having so much success, tore my other ACL. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was there that year. The, I'm at the pivotal point in my career where I'm just eating guys, eating, having every game was 20 plus Euro mm -hmm. League. I'm on NBA TV being interviewed from Europe. So I'm like, man, I'm Tao calling my agent. Yo, we got to sign him now. Tao Ceramica in Spain. Tao right? Ceramica. That's when it was, it's, it's Basconia now, but this is Tao. So I'm like, man, I, I, I got to get to Tao. You know what I'm saying? At this time, did they have a, that Tao Ceramica team probably had Igor Rakosovic. They had Igor Rakosovic, Serkan Erdogan, mm. uh, Erdogan, the shooter from Utah, uh, Pablo Prigioni, mm. uh, Louis Scola. Yeah. You know who I else had they, to get? Wasn't, uh, man, what's my man name? He's from Houston, African cat, went to Texas. Uh, no, he, he was there when I was in Spain. The four man. You talking right. about Gabe Nick? Gabe Nick. Gabe Nick. Gabe, yeah. Gabe, Gabe Nick, yeah. So he came later. That was in the early stages. So that that's came back. Uh, of course, those teams, you know, they they ain't on you no more because you tore your ACL. Yeah. So I'm 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 down. I'm crying, you know, because I got to go through the whole process again. People don't understand. Al, hey, I got, I tore both of my ACLs. Both of them came back four months on both of them. I said, okay, you teams going, y'all going to turn, y'all going to turn the shoulder, turn the ear, whatever the case may be. I said, all right, I got to prove myself again. Yeah, you're going to respect this hustle. You're going to respect this hustle. You're going to respect this grind. So I, I was no stranger to hard work. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It was easy. Mm -hmm. So second time, I just knew what to expect more, you know? Ended up signing in the Euro League team in Germany with uh, uh, Cologne. Because they mm -hmm. won the championship that year. Cologne, Ryan Cologne. The championship. Yeah, so right. the year before they won a championship, but the next year we won the cup with, with Marcin Gortat, big fella, playing the league 12 years. Had a squad. Emmanuel McElroy. Deb Emmanuel McElroy. <laughs> Marcus Faison. Yeah. Uh, man, listen, when I tell you, we had a squad, man. We had him. We had uh, Ronnie Burrell. Ronnie Burrell. Mm, Dave, he's naming hitters. Yeah. Fellas, man, we had some dogs. Couldn't win nothing. You know why? You know why we couldn't win nothing? Al and Dave. Tied, boss. <laughs> we had... Sasha Obradovich, <laughs> Sasha as a head coach. His first year head coach, too. That was his first his year. His first year. Because he had- So, you he, know, they come out the womb practicing every day. 
military style. Yeah. Man, listen, we in Euro League games, we flying, you know, the, the travel is hectic. Yeah. We flying, we going to Russia, Poland, we played in tr- Sopo, all these groups. Yeah. We had a terrible group. Good teams, but location, destination wise, it was terrible. Yeah. Uh, getting off the plane, going straight to the gym, practicing two hours, then playing the next day. What, what, what you gonna do with that? Hey, tell me this. Was he one of them coaches back then where you do your two hours in the morning, but before your two and a half at night, they make you watch an hour of film of practice from the day? Was he one of them? Worse. So what was so bad, guys were so tired, we falling asleep in film session. Yeah. And you know, they start cursing and serving. Yeah, bro, they bro, but I didn't pitch too much. But I didn't bro, they bro. Right. <laughs> Niggas in there crying, laughing. The ones that stayed up, we in there laughing because he exhausted, man, tired. Yeah. So we ain't have a lot of energy, man, to to to, to finish games, bro. Teams were just fresher than we were. They weren't necessarily better. We just didn't have the energy to to be successful in the Euro League. So we got put out after the first round that year. Hey, you but, know, D. Mallet also. He was a player the year before that won that championship. He played in Cologne, right? right. Yeah. So he right. played with a lot of them players. So I remember talking to Mac. Me and Mac went to JUCO together, right? So that's that's yeah. my guy. Yeah. So Mac was like, man, he used to say, man, him and Sasha used to get into it all the time. About to come to blows, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of these coaches forget they played. Right. And you play with some of these guys, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I get you trying to get your respect, but don't forget, like, <laughs> you were once a teammate with guys that you're now coaching. Right. So you can't come at grown-ass men a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Hey, you know, you, so, said, uh, you said something earlier, man, with a lot of people – uh, a lot of the guests that come on here always talk about their money being late, the money not being on time, the, you know, they might not get their money, but what you were the first one who's been on here because you played in Germany. In Germany, there's no money problems. It's like clockwork. No matter what team you want, like it's midnight, clockwork. Money it's, in that account. Hit. it's hit every month. Right, for sure. So yeah. that's one of the like, that's a major plus for Germany. But the money isn't the same amount as other countries. For sure, for sure. It it's it's you're going to get it. It's secure money because the economy in Germany is probably the best in Europe, one of the best for sure. Yeah. So if the team has problems, the government is going to back them up and you know pay the salaries that the guys are missing. You know what I'm saying? So I've always been blessed. You know to 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 get every single dime. You know that I that I was old in Germany, so you know that's why I wasn't really complaining. And then it was Euro League teams that I was on at the time. You know after you know after the bronze wags, which was still you know Euro Cups and all that. But like I said, the end goal was playing in in the Euro League in Cologne. I was fortunate for them to have you know to give me that opportunity from another torn ACL. So I was just rehabbing and preparing myself to go to other countries at the time. I was getting, I was trying to get back to the Tau levels, mm-hmm. you know, the high level Spains and the Maccabis and all of that stuff. You know what I mean? So it, at the end of the day, it worked out, man. So I, I'm, I'm forever grateful for, you know, my time I spent in Germany for sure. And Dave, you know, like the money is, the money's going to get in there. It's going to be there. Yeah. Tell me this. I don't, so you, you, we know before we get into the rest of your career, um, I kind of want you to talk about where your favorite place you ever been was throughout your time playing. Ooh, it don't have to be just basketball, playing, or right? basketball or not. Somewhere maybe you can see yourself living. Right. That's easy. Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go back yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
listen, when I tell you, I don't know if y'all seen uh, the movie with Chris Tucker and the little Chinese guys. Uh, Rush Hour. Heaven Rush on Earth, Paula. Barcelona is heaven on earth, bro. It is. It is. It's just outside of basketball, man, it's, it's the tourist city. Mm-hmm. You got other Americans that, that come there to study there. They come to work there. Restaurants, Americanized, nightlife, food. I mean, anything you can, it's, it was, it was a, a home away from home. Work. Yeah. You got you got the <laughs> Hold on, Dave. Hold on, Dave. Yeah. We can't skip over that. Can't skip over that. <laughs> you got the beach. You got the seaside beach and the city all in the one. All in the one. Every everything you can ask for on a vacation, Barcelona possesses on top of high level basketball. Right. What you there to do to who? So I can see why a lot of guys like soccer players or hoopers, they can get caught up in that, you know, outside of basketball. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of distraction out there. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, and that work, and that work, you know, by, oh. that work is a major distraction. No doubt. And I was going, my next question to you is going to be, can we kind of dive into a little, before we go to our commercial break, can we dive into some of those escapades. <laughs> Listen, when I tell you, when I tell you on every corner, <laughs> I mean, you you just like this. Mm. I mean, just some of the, the the most beautiful people in the world because they're not all Spanish though. Right. You know, you got Dominicans, you got Brazilians, you got Costa Ricans, you got, People from, from Eastern Europe, they come to reside and work in Barcelona. So there, there's a lot of options for guys to, to choose from. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of options for guys to choose from. So it, there was no complaints in that department. Like just being in Barcelona, it just, it just wasn't any complaints at all. You know, just from the, just from the, from the from the ball to the, just the lifestyle, the living, and then the the circumstances was second to none, man. I could I could actually live there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it there, man. I love it. I could see. I would I would live there too. I I don't have the luxury sure. of saying I've been there. So D man, I know <clears throat> you played in a lot of countries all over Europe. Germany, Spain, Israel, Turkey, France, you didn't touch, you didn't touch everywhere. What was your culture shock in any of them places? What did you see that made you that made you go, man, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe I just seen this. Like, for example, I give this example, <laughs> man, I always give it. When I first came to Turkey, when I seen that hole in the floor for a toilet, that blew my mind. <laughs> I'm gonna have to piggyback on you with you. Uh, I'm gonna have to say the same thing. Uh, well, there's two instances. So I'm at Turk Telecom, right? Okay. Stomach tore up in practice. <laughs> I told Cole, I said, Coach, man, can I, I got to use the bathroom. That little hole on the floor, <laughs> I'm running out. I'm like, yo, it's got to be somewhere else I can have, I can use the bathroom. I cannot poop on this, fl- in this floor, in this little hole. First of all, I'm trying to find out where it's going to go. So, you know, you got that little platform. Oh. Hey, and, and Al, Al. Al. There's a little lever you gotta pull. <laughs> I'm so scared to look at it when I when I when it do come out. I'm like, man, what? This is nasty. <laughs> so they got a little lever you pull. <laughs> so it's like some water come out. I don't know water, water come out, but the water's supposed to rinse the yeah. poop down in the little hole. 
Well, I said, boy, this is this this was a shocker to me. I've never experienced that. <laughs> second, the second uh, culture shock was when I first moved there. I first got adjusted to my apartment, all that stuff. So I live next to a mosque. Mm. <laughs> I, know you, I had, I'm tired. I'm on this long flight. I'm on to sleep. All I hear in the nighttime was this. <laughs> I said, oh, my, what is, I woke up out the middle of my sleep. Because <laughs> I, I didn't know if it was an alarm or I didn't know what they said. Nobody told me. Freak me out. Freak me out. Because I live next door to it. So that was something I really had to get used to. You know, which I did as the months came along, but. You know, it, it was that was that was just some shockers to me. Some shockers. Now, I've never been to Turkey. That that is certainly one. Yo, that got me. Dave, can you explain to the folks who've never been to Turkey what exactly that is? Okay, man, that's called the Azan, right? So basically, uh, it's a call to prayer. As the, as everybody, maybe you don't know, in the Muslim religion in Islam. We pray five times a day, right? So basically, that is a reminder for you, like, hey, it's time to pray for everybody so you won't forget. And we respect that. However, when you come from the United States and you never experience it, it's, all you hear is somebody singing and, and you don't know what language, you don't know what's going on, and it's loud. Yeah. The entire country got speakers everywhere, and you just hear <laughs> with no warning. Give me a warning. <laughs> Say, hey, like, hey, you're gonna get it. It's gonna be some noise on the intercom. Don't panic. There's no alarm. No, no, nothing's happening. Right. We just, we just, we just calling the people to pray. And I, and I like Dave said, like you guys know, y'all played in Turkey. Shit, it's, it's, it's respect thing. You know, you get used to it. You know, what I'm saying, I've been. I've embraced whatever country and culture I've experienced, I've embraced, yeah. you know, with open arms. So you can definitely get used to it for sure. Like I did, like we all did. You get used right. to it. And you ain't got no choice. You gonna get- <laughs> and, and, and ain't no, uh, ain't no pork in sight over there either. Now, if you coming from bacon, eating bacon and, and pork pot, <laughs> no, sir, don't even think about it. <laughs> no sir. <laughs> and I left Turkey, man. I left Turkey like like this. You know, like eating all that lamb, man. <laughs> all that lamb. But now nah, it, it was a it was a great experience, man. Different, different, but great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who, who was on that Turk Telecom team? Was Erwin on that team? Ooh, me, the names I'm about to name you right now, y'all just gonna have them. Y'all, y'all face gonna turn up. Chris Lane from North Carolina. Yeah. Andre Owens from, from uh, mm, University man. of Houston. Yeah. Lamaine Wilson. Mm. Erwin Dogla. Big Erwin. Erwin Dudley, yeah. Ricky Davis. Yeah, Ricky yeah. Davis was on that team. I forgot about that. Yeah. Sirkan Erdogan. Yeah. Mm. Hussein Beshak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tur- Turku Etlu, the, the tall six Tutku. nine point. Uh-huh. Tutku Achik. Tutku, Tutku Achik. Tut- yeah, Tutku Achik, yeah. Boy, when I tell you we had a squad, boy, look. <laughs> <laughs> just didn't have enough basketballs for everybody, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What enough basketballs, man? But we and you had, had and, your, and your coach was Urgent, the coolest coach ever. Yo, hey, yes, yeah, man. We I, had. I played for him my last year when I was in Ted College, right? It was a Euro Cup Ted team. College, yeah. Yo, yeah. I say that had to be one of the lightest years of my career. He ain't gonna practice you hard. Practice is not going more than an hour and a half. Yeah. You gonna hoop 30 minutes of that hour and a half. Right. 45 no minutes of it. No mm. doubt, no doubt. 
No, it was fun, man. It was fun. We just, I mean, practice was a breeze. We just, Ricky Davis, yeah. it's my guy. Ricky came over there clearing everybody out the way. Yo, get out the way. I'm finna go one on five on y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm finna, I'm finna, he brought that same into Kahu. But you know how everything is so, you know, compact. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it didn't work. It just didn't work. That don't work. It don't work. So, you know, then we had AO, Dre, and Lemayne, and me, and Chris Dudley. Shit, I'm trying to find my way. I'm coming from scoring, being a scorer. You know, I had guys on the team, the coaches were like, yo, D, pass, Bubba, pass, Bubba. <laughs> Other coaches over there, Bubba, shoot, Bubba, shoot, Bubba. I'm like, man, God, what y'all want me to do? I'm trying, I'm trying to figure it out. I got, I got guys begging for the ball, getting mad they ain't got the ball. I'm like, yo, come on now. So it, it, it was. They had so much money, they just didn't know what to do with the squad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just handing out cheese, bro. Like they would come in the locker room. We play Finnebach. The president be like, yo, you, you be Finnebach, we'll give you a couple of stacks like that. So I'm in there like, what? Shit, I'm finna go out here and try to win out, do all I can to win this game. <laughs> it's some free, it's some free money. Yeah. You know, extra incentives, man, they would get that to you. But it overall, man, it was, it was a it was a different, good experience. I, I, I want to ask you something. I ain't, I ain't trying to put you too much on the spot here, but kind of got to. Um, Dre was a he's a cool cat, but he's kind of a little funnier of a cat. Like, I remember playing against him when he was in, I think he was in Red Star at the time. Um, and mid game, Dre's pulling me to the side, like, Yeah, man, uh, I'm over this Europe shit, man. I'm just gonna go back to the league, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, like, what are you talking about, Dre? <laughs> did you did, did, did you have any experiences with Dre like that at all? Where he no was just doubt, like, no doubt. I think when I got Dre, I think Dre had come to terms that Europe was probably gonna be <laughs> where, where I'm gonna be. <laughs> Because if that was the case, if guys was, you know, would, would be able to go right. back to the league when they wanted to, then it would be a lot of guys back, back in the league. You know what You're I'm right. saying? Now, Dre, Dre is, he was hilarious, man. He he kept me laughing, man. And he 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 did share a lot of his league experiences, man. And, and swapping down, which all players think they can play in the league. He swapped it down. He was going to get back in that league, man. And I was rooting for him. You know, I wanted him to get back in the league as much as he, you know, the way, the, the way he sold it. <laughs> the way, the way he sold it, shit, I, I was convinced that Dre was going back to the league. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yo, I ain't going to even, I ain't going to even hold you because I got a similar story too with Dre. We in Houston. Yeah. We in Houston, right? We out at the club and I'm leaving, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm dipping the next day. So I'm dapping people up, man. All right, man, y'all boys be easy. Have a good year. I'm out. I'm out in the morning. So I dap up Dre. All right, Dre, man, I'll holler at you, man. I'm out in the morning, man. I'm, you know, go to Europe. All right, cool, man. Be safe, man. I'm going to go and get this NBA money. It's so, <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Somebody, somebody had to tell Dre he he had a guarantee something waiting on him when he when he wanted. It. <laughs> that's, that's the way Dre made it seem. You know, that's, that's the way he made it seem. Made it he's seem like that. Dude, though. Dre funny though. He good people. He fun. He's hilarious. Great, great people, man. He he uh he's a he's a competitor, but he had a lot of confidence, man. You couldn't tell Dre <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't that guy. Man, in, I, every, I a, in every aspect of life, though, not just basketball. Yeah. Sure. He is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> man, oh, I, man, pulled, I, I pulled up to Indiana one time, and I'm in Indiana with my partner, right? Um, we're, we just go out there because my, my partner was dating this, this young lady or whatever. And my partner was an NBA dude. 
we pull up out there, we go, we find the gym where everybody's hooping. Man, Dre pulled up bigger than everybody in the league. Yeah. <laughs> Was it a Lamborghini? Oh, <laughs> I've heard the stories about Dre and them Lambos, man. <laughs> I got Dre must have Dre must have signed a, a max deal when he played. <laughs> I said, shit. Whatever, what, whatever, whatever he made, I'm like, man, he Dre got it. <laughs> you know, I, I just didn't know Dre signed a max deal. That's all I'm saying. We gotta get him on the show. We gotta get him on the show. Yeah, man, Dre's hilarious, man. All right, so you so you leave Turk Telecom, man. You go to Belgium, right? And at that time, for those who don't know, Charleroi, I don't know how to say it properly, Charleroi uh, was big time. So can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Man, Charleroi, man, uh, you know, going, they were in our group at Turk Telecom. Okay. In the Euro Cup, we had Charleroi, uh, Bilbao. Mm -hmm. You know, we was in the Euro Cup, which was cool. Every time we played Charleroi, gave them buckets. Mm -hmm. So after that year, you know, of course they came to my agent, you know, offered me, you know, some some nice some nice change. So I think that year I was probably, you no, know, I know I was the highest paid in in the whole Belgium league. Right. You know, I. I it was unheard of. Guys in other teams was mad, like, hey, mad. You know what I'm saying? Like, basically, why is he making what he making and he in Charleroi? You know what I'm saying? But people don't understand, we qualified for the Euro League that year. Mm -hmm. Won the chip. Yeah, uh, played Euro League. I forgot about that. Played in Euro League two years. Played in Euro League two years. So had some more dogs on that squad. Brent Wright from Florida. Joseph Gomez. Uh, Dwayne Broyer, Justin Hamilton, as y'all know, from Florida. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Welsh, Jerry Welsh, yeah. played in the league. I mean, we had a squad, man. So, uh, we, you know, we had to qualify. We had to play that qualifying round for the Euro League and qualify both times I was there. You know, so got got over there and just had the key. You know how Luca Dunches got the key for the Mavs? Yeah. yeah. Coach gave me the key, man. Once you get the key, you're just extremely confident. Yeah. You know, you could do what you want. And that that kind of like, I got my swag back then. You know, coming from, you know, Turk Telecom and other big teams, you know, trying to figure it out. I had it figured out, you know, and it worked. And guys were just, you know, they were accepting them. You know, they was just like, okay, D, we trust you. We're going to follow your lead. Made it work, man. Won the Belgium whole league. Made some noise in the Euro League. So it worked. It worked. So D Mallet, man, your name has come up twice on our show with different interviewees. We have a question that we ask everybody, right? Who gave you problems or who gave you that work? Maybe it was just only one game or whatever, but maybe that one game, you couldn't do nothing with this dude and this dude went off on him. Who was that dude? Ooh, man. Man, I had a couple dudes. I had some, like, I really had to bring it. One was, uh, he, let me tell you, we, now we were, with this guy, we were both going at it. All right. But I couldn't, like, he, 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 somehow he would score. <laughs> and that's Bobby Brown. <laughs> hey, you know what's in Rob Ronnie? He's you he was you was his you was his uh one say he had problems with. Right. Really? Yeah, Listen. Bobby said the mud matter. Yep. yep. Him, him and his boy Pooh. Pooh Jeter. Listen. <laughs> hey, you gotta what? say his name right. Jetter. Yeah. Don't like Jetter. that. Jetter, Poo, yeah. I know, I know. Pooh Poo <laughs> get mad if I say that. Pooh <laughs> Jetter, Bobby Brown. L.A.'s finest, I call him. Listen, mm -hmm. 
I was so mad at Bobby Brown after the game. Like I, I would catch it. I would roll. I, like I, I got into it with Bobby because I was so mad that he scored the amount that he scored. If that makes sense, like Bobby just he would pull like you had to damn that play a boxing one on, yeah. <laughs> like a like a high school boxing one on him because. He just could put the ball in the basket, man. Yeah. You know, we would go back and forth, but I couldn't, like, when I would take a step, he would take another step. I'm like, God, damn. <laughs> like, this little joker kid scored his basketball. And I, I got I got him when he was in Berlin, so he coming out of, you know, college. He, he just kept getting better and better each year. Then he had an NBA game. Him and Pooh have <laughs> NBA games, man. Yeah. And there's there's no question why they played in the league. Now, should they have played longer? In my opinion, yes. You know, but Bobby was Bobby was one guy that gave me fits, man. He was tough. He was really tough. Bobby, and I would also say Jeremy Pargo. Mm. Pargo had he he just a big guard. He was a yeah. running back. Yeah. <laughs> he was a big guard. Yeah. And like, athletic. You need to go, you need to go get a handoff and run a 90, 32 dive somewhere. <laughs> and, and Pargo, he's tall. He's a he's a he's six three, six two, yeah. six three, just a big guard. You know, so I had to really come to play when uh when he was in Maccabi, you know, and I was in Charlotte. But other than that, man. I would say those two really gave me fits. I had to come to, I had to get my sleep the night before. Was just, <laughs> what what was it? Like, I know with Bobby, it's because he was just, Bobby was slick, crafty, and a bucket getter. But right. Cargo was more like at you, athletic. Like, what, what was the issue that you were having with him? Like, I study film a lot. Like, I, I watch film against guys that I, I'm going to play against. Mm -hmm. And there was one play that's probably – hit the whole net, the whole internet. And he crossed that dude, the one, uh, the one something from Berlin that year. No, from, he played in, in uh, Zalgris. Crossed him up, went to the, to the lane and just dunked on somebody. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just, I did all I could do for that not to happen to me, you know. But Pargo was just strong, man. He was just strong and just could get to the basket, use his strength very well. But he's uh, a he's a guy that I, I respect a lot, you know. So who who's the dude? Uh, we like to ask that, but we also like to ask this. Who's the dude who just kept kind of pushing you and you said, man, listen, dog, stop playing with me. And you just had to clap him. You just had to just, <laughs> just gun him down. Who, who's that dude? You talking about as far as like going to get him buckets or like putting his hands? No, 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 no. I had a, I had some cu couple of instances, man, where you just want to be like, okay, forget this basketball stuff. <laughs> now, now you crossing my manhood. Now, you know what what I, mean? I would say uh, basketball wise, who was talking a lot. Man, that's a good question, man. Uh, nobody, you know what? I, 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 no, not nobody I could think of really kind of like came at me like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, all in my ear talking to where I, I've always had the respect. You know, it's, it's always been a respect thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always had to, you know, play and guys respected that. And, you know, I would show mad respect, too. You know, I, I would talk shit, but I, I, for the most part, I would show respect in return as well. You know, so it was never no beef or anything like that. So, guys, my opponents, point guards that I would really play against, you know, nobody really got at me to where, like, okay, I'm – all right, let, let Joker, I'm, I'm, I'm about, to, about to give you a bucket or two. You're talking to mm -hmm. – no, I, I can't say nobody really has, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that's, been, a, that's been pretty cool, man. So I, I would like to think I've, I've gained the respect on, you know, from a lot of guys that played in Europe, for sure. Out of all, all your teammates or guys you played against, 
This is going to be tough. We like to ask this, though. Out of all the guys you played against or with, can you – you've been great naming all these names, like a, like a true point guard. Can you give us your starting five Ooh. all time, guys you played against or with in Europe? It don't have to be all Americans. It could be Europeans, Americans, because we, we know some cold Europeans that play too. Mm -hmm. Man, that's tough, guys. And I, and and you I would in Spain, I, so I you, you went up against Sergio Yule and all of them when they was young. <laughs> man, y'all gonna do me like this, man. Let me let me just say this: no disrespect for anybody that I don't mention. Cause I got, I got, I can, I can spend a whole day with putting five, a perfect five together. Mm -hmm. down but right now at this moment, if I had to pick my, include myself or exclude myself. However you want to do it. Whatever you want to do. You know, I got to put my, you know, I got to put myself in that thing. For <laughs> I got to put myself in that thing. Hey, you at the one. Uh, you at the one. I would say at the two, at the time right now, in his prime. Yeah. In his prime. Rudy Fernandez. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When I tell you this boy was just a if you look at him and you 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 sit by him or he walked next next to you or past you, you would think, who is this old lanky Opie <laughs> Taylor? <laughs> Great white hope guy. But when I tell you, we'll give you a bucket. Any way you wanted it, he was gonna give it to you. Right. Man, at at the at the three. Man, that's that's tough. That's tough, man. I'ma say. Bro, it's two guys I can put. I could put Keith Langford, ooh, mm. and yeah. I can also put Devin Smith at the three. Mm. That's tough. That's tough. They say, different. They different. They both different. Yeah. See, Devin, Devin's gonna give you everything you want all across yep. the board. He's gonna yep. pick you up. He's gonna rebound. Yeah. yeah. And he's gonna give you a bucket. Yeah, but Keith's gonna give you all the buckets. Yeah. <laughs> Keith's gonna give it to you how you want it. In a in a smooth way. Like it's just it's just effortless when it comes to storm with Keith. Hey, can I tell you something so about I, I'm gonna have those two gonna can I tell you something about Keith? Tell me. So Keith came on the pod. Keith came on the pod, right? Okay. And Keith, Keith was sipping wine and had his legs crossed. <laughs> Keith is as smooth a cat as you know me. <laughs> and that's how Keith is off the court too. He, that's Keith. Keith just he just he's mild. Yeah. Just smooth. Just smooth. <laughs> But his game that translates into his game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey Al, big hey Al, Al and Big Dave. Just yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. it ain't it ain't tough, it ain't uh -uh. rough, it ain't it just smooth, charm and soft smooth. Yeah, I mean, dude, he led Champions League in scoring this year at the age of 38. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. I believe it, man. So, so who you going with, Devin or Keith? That's man. We got you at the one. We got Rudy Fernandez at the two. Where we going with that three spot? I'll say Devin only because he out rebounds Keith. Okay, so we got Devin at the three. And Keith is not mm. a three for real. Keith ain't a three. That's what I'm saying. Like, Keith, Keith, 
can I get a sub? Can I no, sub? no. <laughs> okay, so look now we got our one, two, three, and you got a nice long, lengthy line like group at the two and three right now. So far on the wings, you long, and you are gonna lock up. Yeah. What we doing at the four spot? Four. And it doesn't have to be European, right? It could be whatever, anybody. American, American, European, European, whatever you want. Roselle Ellis. Ooh. They don't even know Ro, but yeah. They don't know Ro. Dave, let me they let don't me know Roselle. Let me help y'all understand for the viewers who don't know Roselle. I know Ro. Rose, you forgot I went to school in Seattle. I know exactly yeah, who Roselle Ellis is. <laughs> but the viewers don't. So I'm going to help y'all understand. Okay. Where I'm from, Roselle got two nicknames. We call him Swolezell, like because he just cop diesel swole, or we call him Jailhouse because he looked like he spent a bunch of time locked up just working on his body right that's how he looked and that's how he come play like what's happening <laughs> so i'm with you on that <laughs> but if i had to pick one so for the viewers to pick i would also pick tornik shingaya but that's we ain't we ain't going there to toko plays in okay. cheska now play with the nets he's a tough young fella man he's a real tough young fella i like him at the four but at the five And guys, and, and, I, and I can't stop reiterating that I, I have so many guys that I can choose from, bro. And right. this, this is probably the hard, but that comes immediately off my head. At the five, ain't got no post moves. <laughs> Offensively, ain't it. Can't shoot free throws. <laughs> ain't ain't going to put no back, your, his back to the basket, none of that. Old school. Andre Riddick. Oh, <laughs> Big Dre. Played in Kentucky. He's the one that almost got in a fight with Rasheed Wallace. Yeah. We'll block your shot. Yeah. We'll rip you, rip a point guard coming yeah. off a ball screen. Yeah. We'll dunk on you and high energy motor. Yeah. yeah. The guy you want on your team. I love him. If I can run it back, I got to have him on my squad. <laughs> got to have him. Yeah. Hey, Big Dave, he gonna give you a run for your money too, Big Dave. Cause <laughs> you gonna, Big Dave, you gonna look at him and be, be like, who is this old joker? Got, look, with the goggles. the goggles. I know who you talking about. You wore the goggles. Oh man. Guy you put on your team. We'll block your shot. Change, shot changer. Mm-hmm. Oh man, he just he just he just a guy that you want on your squad, man. So I would pick him over. And I played with like guys like Chris Lane, Jerome Oeso, uh Dickie Simpkins. You know what I'm saying? He's a legit five man. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I I no disrespect to any of those guys. I, I just I, I that's just a tough question to answer, man. Nah, man. I mean, nah, I like that. That, that's a solid five you got. Real solid. Good Real offensively solid. and defensively. You good. You well okay. rounded. A lot of guys come mm -hmm. on here and just get all buckets, and but can't guard a park car. Can't, can't guard a park car. Just bucket gears. You got the guard too now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Got the guard too. So, D. <clears throat> The places that you played in, right? What would you say would be the most, as far as the fans? Like, can, can you tell me your fan experience? Because I know like in Germany, the fans are like more calm, but when you go to other places, like they can get real rowdy. Do you have any, any crazy experiences with fans that was that, that just like blew your mind because we know in Greece, Greece, Turkey, Serbia, fans get at it. And a lot of people don't understand that. 
places I played at or against? Both. It, it don't matter. Against, at. Uh, bro, listen. <laughs> places I played in, I would have to say Maccabi. Hmm. Maccabi Tel Aviv fans are there's no empty seat in the stadium, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, all you see is yellow and blue. <laughs> all you hear is, I mean, you just get hype, man. You just want to just two step in the in the warm up line. <laughs> Yala, a biker. Yala, bro. It, it just it's a it's a it it brings chills to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The the whole atmosphere just. It's, it's it's undescribable, bro. It's undescribable. You got the drums, you got, they call it different gates. They got different gates with different sections. You know, and they just be in that thing rocking. Rocking, boy. You just in there. You on the bench just bobbing your head. D, but a, 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 D yeah, man. we need you to hit that song a little longer so the fan, like when they watch this, because I'm going to send this straight to Israel. They're going to drop it in the media all through Israel. So I okay. need you to hit that song a little long so they can sing with you. <laughs> yeah. Yalla, oh, bite the, yalla, oh, bite the, hey. <laughs> they love that, boy. Right. <laughs> love it, man. But opponent-wise, man, I would have to say one of the toughest places you could possibly play in, there's two spots. I think I know you're going. Real, real, real tough to play in. But you want to play in them because you want to quiet the crowd. You want to quiet, mm -hmm. quiet those suckers. One is Panathinaikos. Yep. yep. The second one is Partisan yep. fans. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And see, bro, during the game, you may just see like a red flame just go up in there. That's that's how that's how wild and rowdy it is, bro. I mean, it, it just it's just it's soccer fans in the basketball game. Mm -hmm. I mean, they love they love everything about their players, man. They hold that whole organization they love. So those were the two I would have to say that's uh that that was tough places to play for sure. Right. Tough crowds all the way around the board. Did you ever have a moment where you actually got to silence those crazy ass crowds? Yeah. Maccabi, when I was in when I was in Charlotte, you know, Charlotte I had that key. <laughs> there was a lot of instances where I'm like, I'm talking about I'm hitting, I'm hitting buzzer beaters at the halftime already. Mm -hmm. You know, like falling out of bounds type stuff. You know, because those are teams that you know, you get up for it because they got all the hype. Yeah. Al, Snowman, you already know what it is. Yeah. Big Dave, you know how it is. When you in Odenburg, you want to play against the Berlins. You want to, you want to, you want to show everybody in that gym that look, I'm that guy. Yeah. You know, when you were in when you were in Shalawa, who was on that Maccabi team? Um uh, is that when uh that's bad to be Devin Smith there, right? That's when uh they had Devin Smith, they had Keith Langford, they had Sofo. See, I, oh, God. I, I, God. I, I went to, I went to that same team. They bought me out of my contract that year. Mm. So I replaced Jordan Farmer. Mm. So I led the Euro League in scoring that first half of the, the season. I was maybe, I either led them or the top two in scoring. Okay. So I, I was either going to Locomotive Cuban or Maccabi Tel Aviv and a couple of more, but I wanted to go to Maccabi. Maccabi yeah. was like, I had David Blue. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Keith Langford. I played with Keith Langford, Devin Smith, uh, David Blue, like I said, uh, Lior Eliyahu. Yeah. Uh, I had the top. I had the top Israeli players, and I also had uh, Sean James. Oh yeah, 
Sean James, and I had uh, uh, Hendricks, Richard Hendricks from big Alabama, big, big, Alabama. Big, big boy, yeah. big boy, great team, man, great team. Organization was ran like an NBA organization. Locker room off the chain, travel first class. <laughs> I, I mean, it was just it was second to none, man. It was NBA in Europe for real. Mm. So I, I love I love being there. It was tough to play, you know, a lot of pressure. Uh, playing with David Black, yeah. you know, and I it's funny because I got a story because when I time bought out, when they time out, time out. We gonna go to one more break. So D man, you have any uh? Everybody has some wild experiences while playing in Europe, man. Is there any stories that you could tell us that you experienced while playing? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Man, I got a, a Coach David Black story, man, that that still still sticks to me to, to this day. Uh, I remember coming to Maccabi, which was a, a big thing at the time. Um, always wanted to play for Coach Black. Got a chance to play against him, but not for him. Mm. You know, great coach, huge name, not only in Europe, but stateside as well. Just a world-renowned coach. You know, so you want to be coached by those type of guys. You know, so, so now that my, out of my career, I can always say I was coached by one of the best, David Black. Yeah. Right, cool. yeah. So I know during the, the whole recruiting process, you know, buying me out of my contract, him and one of the GMs uh, slash owner, president or whatever, they sat me down. They were like, look, end of the day, do you want to come to Makai? Like, we ain't, I know you juggling different teams, trying to see what you want to do, basically. Right. This was in Charleroi. And I was like, yo, I'm coming to Makai. So they let me go home. I had to go, you know, I was excited. I went home. They let me fly home until I had to come back because we was in three leagues that year. We was in the ABA. Oh, yeah. Which was great. Then we were in the domestic Israeli league and in the Euro league. So practices were major fun. They were cool, real light. Because, shit, we had three games a week, you know. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what to expect because I was going to play with some, some dogs that, you know, that demanded the ball and – you know, they demanded a lot from their different, you know, teammates. Because, look, I'm replacing Jordan Farmer, NBA Laker, yeah. you know, tough shoes to fill, ready for the challenge, whatever the case may be. So, Coach Black was a, was a coach that, you know, he, he explained what he wanted. If you, if you didn't do what he wanted, okay, it was going to be a situation, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Okay. So I get there, I'm I'm coming from like I'm trying to still figure it out. Like I got big sofo and they want the ball. I got a feed keep David Blue. You know, these guys have already established. So I'm a new guy, you know, top score in the Euro League in the first half. Shit. Gotta I gotta try to find my way, you know, and get off like I just left off. You know what I'm saying? So I remember this instance, man. I came in, my first game back was a great game. My first game coming to a new team, 15 points and the win. So, you know, Coach Black was like, oh, good job. You know, management, you know, which is a lot of pressure. Great job. Everybody happy. So I'm like, shit, well, I'm finding my way already, baby. Shit, well, I'm good. <laughs> Couple of my other games, ABA games, playing good, doing what I'm supposed to, but I wasn't demattered. You know, I'm 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 the demand mallet who's trying right. to fit in. Right. <laughs> I'm trying right. to fit in, so I ain't that. I ain't super aggressive. I'm I'm halfway timid, to be honest with you. You know, I couldn't be that like. Do, 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 do. I'm like, ah, okay, here, here. You know what I'm saying? That type, but played played okay. Needed more time, so we played. Can two. They were in our group. Dave, Snowman. I don't know if you remember this guy from Italy named Basile. Shooter. One of Italian's top players on the national team, everything. Mm -hmm. So there was one instance. I was supposed to, you know, when you, when you can't guard a, a great shooter 
You can't trail them because if you trail them, what they're gonna do? They're gonna curl on you, know, yeah. pull that shot. He's six five, I'm six feet. If that pushing on six feet, he gonna shoot, curl and shoot right over me. I can That's jump it. all I can, jump out of my body to try to block that shot. I'm not blocking. So I was supposed to face guard him. So when he come off the screen, I'm there. I'm like in his face. But my dumb ass, I ended up trailing him. Crucial point, pivotal point of the game. I trailed him. Long story short, I trailed him, curled him, whack him, whack him. <laughs> Come sit your ass down. <laughs> when I tell you, I sat my ass down, not only for that game, but many more games to come out for that one play. <laughs> Big Dave, Al, stressed, trying to figure it out, depressed. Yeah. I ain't never had no game in Europe, college, high school, little league, where I had donut. I had a couple of donuts. DMPs. <laughs> Coach's decision. <laughs> Coach's decision. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm I'm going home. I ain't want to go out. I yeah. ain't want to go to no wrestle. I ain't want to be seen. I'm over there stressed. I'm like, damn. I'm sorry, coach. <laughs> I, I, it was one point I went to Coach Blatt. I was like, coach, am I doing something wrong? What did I do? Still on them coach's decision. Still on them coach's decision. No, no DMPs. We in game five. I ain't played. I ain't played now. We in game five in the the one of the the historical series in European basketball. Maccabi Tel Aviv versus Panathinaikos mm. with Diamantidis, mm. John Batiste. I mean, what's what's Batiste's name? Mike Batiste. Mike Batiste. Mike, Mike, Mike. One of my favorite players. Yeah. Drew Nicholas, mm -hmm. I believe Drew was on that squad. From Maryland. Too, I'm not from Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, from Maryland. Maybe played garbage minutes in that series, if any. Game five, this, the decision making game. In Maccabi, standing room only. Ain't played for months, two, three months. Coach Black put me in the game. Big Dave, Al, your mental it, before the game, I'm expected not to play. Yeah. Come on, man. Get in the game. I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Keith Langford penetrate. I'm in the corner. He penetrate, hit me in the corner. Got that thing. Back home. Crowd yeah. went nuts. I'm running down the, down the side, like talking shit. Why did I do that? Come back another time. Keep flanking, penetrate. Find me again. Missed the shot. Shot to put us up with a few seconds to win the game. Mm. But when I tell you that was the funniest acting situation, people acting funny. I'm like, yo, I ain't played in three months. I'm just there practicing. You put me in the game that I, the most crucial game. Mentally, I wasn't even prepared because I'm thinking I ain't playing. They start the little Israeli point guard in my spot, Yogev Ohayan. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, I ain't about to play. Put me in the game. I'm like Coach Black, man. But he did the same, he had the same situation before I got there with Keith. Had the same situation before I got there with Tyrese Rice, but mm -hmm. they had time to figure it out. I didn't have time because I'm coming half mid to the end of the season. You know what I mean? So learn so much from that whole situation, man. It was it was crazy. It was crazy, but that's my crazy David Black story, man. But overall, I have nothing bad about the whole experience. I mean, it was a whole experience in itself. Uh, wouldn't change it for the world. I just probably would have held Basili the way I was told to hold him, you know, <laughs> from the get go. You know what I'm saying? You, you would have top locked him, is what I they call top it. Top locked and drop on him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, like I said, man, it was it was a it was a great experience, bro. 
great experience. So I, I wouldn't change it for the world, man. Been blessed to play 17 years and and play on a high level for so many for so many years, man. It, it it's it's been a dream come true, bro. So right. I wish yeah. I could run it back in my mind. I still think I could play. I still play now. Mm. And I got a lot of mileage on this body. So I still get out there and play with these young guys, man. And I'm in the 40 and over league on a couple of them, but you know, sometimes I play pickup ball with these young cats and, you know, they call me OG. I don't move half as half as the way I used to, but I tell you what, I ain't lost. And that's that hammer. Yeah. That hammer ain't going nowhere. And Al, you can shoot. No doubt. <laughs> you, got a, you got a hammer on you yourself, but I'm telling you, that's hammer over here? <laughs> I'm going to give you a run for your money, big dog. <laughs> I got to relive these glory days, man. But it's been fun, man. So I wouldn't change it for the world, my gosh. Melon, man, I, I can't lie to you, man. This has been easily one of the most pleasurable interviews we've done. I'm speaking for me and Dave on that. I, I'm looking at his face, and I know, I've know i known Dave for a long time. Yeah. So I, I know. like We, we both enjoyed this. Right. I uh, appreciate y'all having me, nah, man. No, no, no. I'm, that, ain't just, that ain't just talk for the show. I mean that. Yeah, um, appreciate it, my guy. Before though, before we get off, I want to ask you one more thing. What are you doing now that you got more time on your hands and you're actually done with it all? What are you doing now? Have you decided which direction you want to go, or have you just are you just kind of just chilling? Like where are you at with everything now? Believe it or not, man, I'm still around the game. Uh, I have my own consultant company where I scout more European wise than, than stateside. Okay. And uh, I'm a partner in a restaurant in New York with uh, four friends. It's uh, me, uh, you know, one of them, uh, Jay Williams, who's an ESPN broadcaster. Yeah. Uh, and Ken Hamilton from New York. Just, we, 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 we went in and, and opened a restaurant that's doing pretty well in Lower East Side, Manhattan. Okay. And uh, just doing some more entrepreneur uh, things, man. So I uh, gotta stay in the game. Um, in, a, in a different capacity for sure. Had a lot of opportunities that I didn't jump on because I still wanted to play. My old butt went to Nancy. Mm. I played in Nancy at 39, 38, 39, 39, 39. I ended up my career at 40. So I, listen, I had shut it down until, you know, my agent's like, yo, it's an opportunity. They wanted to vet in there. I played with, uh, Elton Brand at Virginia. I mean, not El Elton Brown. I don't know if you know yeah. big Elton Brown played at Virginia. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bre Breon Rush. Oh, yeah. Uh, played with a, uh, at the time was a draft prospect. Uh, and Jonathan Gene got a little 7 1, supposed to go in the first round, but he had that same condition as uh, oh, yeah. uh, Isaiah Austin from Baylor. Yeah. So he didn't get picked up, but. Man, I, uh, those opportunities, you know, once you don't get on those opportunities, they gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was some league stuff, some G League stuff. So uh, just been, you know, been grinding, doing my own thing, man, standing around the game and and just in a different capacity now. So yeah. that's why hey, I lied. I lied. I got one last one. Tell me. Talk to me. If you could talk to all these young dudes out there at the exact same time, right, in this moment? What would you tell them? I would tell them, honestly, the truth. A lot of them aren't being told the truth these days. That's a fact. <laughs> and, and it frustrates me now because being at home, I, I get to see more. I get to see high school, AAU, uh, college, you know, because we're gone 10 months out of the year. Yep. So you're not hands-on. Now that I'm a little bit more hands-on, I'm a little bit more observant. A lot of these these people that don't have good intentions at the at the end of the day tell these kids what they want to hear. Yep. So to answer your question, I would tell them the truth, which is everybody ain't gonna make it to the NBA. Yep. I don't give a shit. You could be good. You know, it's it's a, it's a small window, you know, to make it to the NBA. And then if you do make it to the NBA, the hard that's the easy part. The hard part is staying. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Second, there's other avenues, other platforms where you can go make a, a great living. Yeah. You know, but it's not easy like these guys think it is. I hear all the time, yo, D Mallet, 
If this NBA stuff, I'm gonna go overseas and play. <laughs> it ain't easy to play in Europe. Mm -mm. It's not easy to get there. I got guys begging me, D Matter, can you give me to Europe? With no experience, no, ain't played not a lick of college ball, played yeah. through their junior year in high school. I'm like, my God, it's not that, it's not that easy to play in Europe. <laughs> You have yeah. with no resumes, no video, no film. Everybody thinks it's easy to play in Europe, but it's not. And I'm not only saying that because I play and we play on, mm -hmm. on, on high levels, but it's not that easy. These guys, you got to work hard, man. You got to put time in. It. And when you get over there, it ain't going to be what you think it's going to be. And they're going to ship your ass right on the first thing smoking back over here. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I get so frustrated when I hear that. And I hear these guys, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't get in these guys' conversations when they're talking to other people, other girls. How I play overseas, Mexico ain't overseas. Right. <laughs> right. I get mad. man, stop Mexico. It, that, if, if you can drive to Mexico, eh? Right. <laughs> right. That's a whole. It's a whole different. <laughs> it's different. Right. It's different, my guy. So, I, I would just tell them that, man. Look. If a guy such as myself that comes from a mid-major mm -hmm. with an opportunity to play in the NBA, but that was my goal, shit, to play in the league. I was in, me and Tierra, Dave, you know, Tierra play, ended up playing in the league. Yeah. I ended up playing 17 years in Europe. Everybody has different routes. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're, there's money to be made out there if you do it the right way. And that's one, put God first, work hard, and the let the, the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. You know, stop being gun ho and, and 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 on this NBA stuff. It's more to that. It's political at once. And then you when you get there and have your chance, you got to play when you do get there. It's hard to stick, mm -hmm. especially guys my size. Because right. they ain't they going for these young guns who 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 are big. That could do what I could do that, but but bigger, mm -hmm. you know, and better. You know what I'm saying? So there's more, there's more to the NBA. There's more ways to make a decent living than playing in the NBA if you do it the right way. Right. You know, because once you do make it a year, you gotta be one, as y'all know, you gotta be professional as shit. No doubt. You gotta be super professional. You know what I'm saying? You can't miss no practice. You got to practice because at the end of the day, you're being paid to, to what? Practice. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're playing these one games a week type of stuff, you know. So the end goal is to play in multiple leagues than one. So that's it, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Look, if y'all need anything from me, Dave, Snowman, y'all know where I'm at. Hit me. I appreciate y'all showing love, man. If I could do anything, man, I'm going to spread the word on the podcast. I love what you guys are doing. I was excited when when Al told me about it and it was a no brainer, I'm in Louisiana, I'm moving around. I said, look, I'm, I'm gonna pause and stop and jump on my guy's podcast, man. So continue to do great things. Like I said, if there's anything you need from my end, phone call away, good brothers. No doubt, man, we appreciate that. Coming on, man, like I said before, it's been a minute since me and you connected. It's been years, man, so it was good seeing you, talking to you. Man, thanks for coming Likewise, my the show, man. It was a great show. Your energy, everything, the game that you gave everybody. We appreciate it. No doubt. No doubt, my guys. Y'all have a blessed one, man. And stay up and hit me up, man. Don't let this be the last time we speak. No, no you gonna hear from me. Y'all hit me up, man. Let me know. And y'all and get David Blacktail on here, man, and tell him, look. You wrong for sitting DeMond on the bench for <laughs> as long as you did. <laughs> I'm about to text him right now. Hey, hey, to text him right hey, hey, now. Hey, hey, say DeMond Mallet said hello. Yeah. And tell him I need one more chance, man. Let's run this <laughs> thing back, baby. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in and watching another episode of the Eurostep Podcast. Catch us on everything. YouTube Next One's Networks page or anything audio. That's Eurostepper Podcast, no G. Cause we got all the game. Thought it was a joke, but they still playing games for. Holes in my denim, never holes in my game, no.